life will brighten everywhere in Jesus' name. Happy disciples you will be. Conquerous disciples you will be. And everywhere you go, you'll drop something tangible and profitable for people around you in Jesus' name. You'll carry forth the resurrection power everywhere you go. Give a good amen now. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Lord, because we come around the same table of the Lord so we can drink and feed and eat and be nurtured and be strengthened and be empowered. Lord, we pray as we go forth out of the retreat, we pray, Lord, that your power will go with everyone in Jesus' name. In that same place where we have been before, and we are weak and fainting, we'll go to those same places, and we're going to be strong. We're going to work, and the work we do will be acceptable and profitable and rewardable in life and throughout eternity. But well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Mark chapter 16. Verses 19 and 20. Mark 16. Verses 19 and 20. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and he sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word of signs following. You saw the amen there now? Yeah. Amen. The Lord had risen from the dead and he appeared to his own disciples and he showed them infallible proofs, concrete proofs that he is the same Christ, the one that died the one that was buried, and the one that rose again, he appeared to them those 40 days. They were memorable days of the final day after that resurrection. He was speaking to them. And after he had spoken to them and given them instruction, he was received up into heaven. And he sat on the right hand of God. And then we are told that Having given them instruction, having given them a commandment, having given them the program for the future, from then on until they saw him face to face, they went to work immediately. They went forth, they preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them, the Lord walking with them. And he's talking about all believers. And the work he's talking about is all kinds of work. And as you leave this retreat when we finish on Sunday, and you go back home, and you go back to the market, and you go back to your office, and you go back to your community, and you go back everywhere, you are walking, not only that you are preaching, not only that you are sharing the gospel, even the work you are doing, it says the Lord walking with them, the Lord will go with you to your market. He'll go with you to your office. He'll go with you to your company. He'll go with you everywhere. He will walk with you and he will confirm the work of your hand in Jesus' name. Walking with his resurrection power. Christians have made a great mistake, a serious mistake. They have thought only when they hold the Bible, only when they quote a verse of the Bible, 
Only when they are saying, Thus says the Lord, that's the only time they are walking in for God. They have dropped their Bible from their office work. They have do dropped their Bible from their factory work. They have dropped their Bible from all the informants they have in the world. And it's like only a portion of their time, a fraction of their time, is given to walking with biblical precepts, walking with biblical principles, walking with resurrection power. But the Lord is calling us to attention today. And he's saying, when Christ comes to us, he doesn't want any area of our lives to be void of his power. And so from today, everywhere you find yourself, every work you find yourself doing, you're carrying forth and carrying on that work with resurrection power. Are you a student at school? You're doing everything for the glory of God as you are studying. And the Lord is with you. And are you a worker anywhere where you earn salary? And where you do your normal day-to-day -day work? He wants you to understand. He wants to be with you there. He wants to work with you there. And he's working with them everywhere. And he will confirm the work of your hands in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the appointed work for every true believer. The appointed work for every true believer. Number two, the assigned work of all the brethren. Anyone that's called a child of God, a brother, a sister, a born again person, a saved person, somebody having eternal life, and Christ lives on the inside of you. There is Side work for all the brethren. Number three, the acceptable work for his blessing. The work you do, and then his blessing will rain upon that work. The work you do, and the blessing of God will be part of that work, and it will bless the work of your hand. All right, he'll bless the work of my hand. He'll bless that work, rewardable work you will do in Jesus' name. Number one, the appointed work for every true believer. Now we need to pay attention because there are people that think of one or two verses of the scripture. And the understanding they have from those two verses of scripture, that's what they carry throughout the whole Bible. But let Jesus the Lord, Jesus the Savior tell us the very source, the origin, the foundation of the work he has appointed for everyone. John chapter 6, reading from verse 28, John chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 28. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? They were not born again yet. They were natural people. They were ordinary people. They were seeking after the Lord. In fact, they wanted to make him king. And he said, Rabbi, Master, we'll be searching for you and looking for you. And the Lord said, you are not searching for me because of seeing those miracles, but because your belly is so full. You have eaten, and then because of that you are full. Then he told them, labor not for the meat which perishes, but for that which endures unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, shall give unto you everlasting life. They didn't have that yet. For him, as God the Father sealed. It was after that they asked him the question, what do you want to do, to do? What are we going to do? What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Look at verse 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God. 
that she believe on him whom he has said. It says the foundation of work to be recognized by God, the origin, the beginning, the very source of work to be recognized by God is that you believe on him, on Christ, whom he has sent. Unfortunately, there are many people that have not read that verse. They have jumped out. They have gone everywhere. And they say they are walking. And the very foundation, believe on him, whom he has sent, that they have not done. They will be surprised on the final day. If they don't come back to the foundation, to the basis, and believe on Christ, from the Father, and said, and he said, I'm already walking, I'm already walking, and they walk here, and they walk here, and they walk there, and the foundation has not been laid. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. And the beginning of that will of the Father is that to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you turn away from sin, you turn away from self, you turn away from Satan, you turn away from self-centeredness, you turn away from personal pride, and you turn in humility and submission, you turn unto Christ. That is the foundation. You believe on him, and he gives you eternal life. But if you just jump out, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking, and you have not done that, you are not in the will of the Father. Verse 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, by the way, they knew his name. They knew his title. They even know about his power. And they know about some of the works he himself had done. And they thought, if we model our lives to his life, and we do the work that he did, Cast out devils, heal the sick, and go about preaching without starting at the entrance of the narrow way that leads to heaven. They thought modeling their lives after the pattern of what Christ had done. They thought that would be work, but not. Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in thy name? They thought that was a work to start with. And in thy name have cast out devils. They thought there's nothing to match that kind of work. And in thy name have done many wonderful works. They knew there were works. And they centered their attention on that. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. That's different from saying, I don't know you now, but it says, I never recognized you. You were not born again. You didn't come to the gate. You didn't enter the narrow way that leads unto life. You just jumped up and you saw some references of the Bible, how to prophesy, how to heal. How to cast out devils, how to fast and have atomic power of the Holy Ghost. And then you jumped into the field. But I never knew you as a born again child of God. I never knew you as part of the kingdom. Anybody there? But because you had acquired some skills in the world very good skills the skill to sing the skill to play a musical instrument the skill to be a girl and the skill to supervise 
and the skill of administration and the skill of organization because you have got the skills already you came in and without going to the gate without going to the source without getting born again you offered yourself and somebody who did not know about starting at the right point brought you in and since that time you've been casting out devils since that time you've been prophesying since that time you were a trained teacher and whatever subject it is you already know the program and the principles of teaching and not too long you started teaching in the church and not too long already because you have skill of administration you're already doing administration and then eventually but you always know that something is missing there's no satisfaction there's no acceptance although people think you are doing well there is an emptiness a vacuum in your heart and eventually if you don't get back to the origin on that final day you will hear i never knew you depart from me ye that work in the equity i pray your case will not be like that second corinthians chapter 11 i'm reading from verse 13 second corinthians chapter 11 i read from verse 13 it says in verse 13 for such a false apostles they didn't start at the right point they were not born again because of common sense because of education because of training because of ability to endure whatever it is and because of the bold face and the human natural courage you know there is human natural courage and there are people who are natural people who are not saved who are not born again who are trained to be fearless and courageous and you've got that natural skill and you're always in the forefront and anywhere there's any challenge anything to be done you jump to the front people even call you the apostle of activity the apostle of action and these people such a false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves christ not transforming them the holy ghost not transforming them transforming themselves into the apostles of christ no marvel for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works we're looking at titus chapter 1 verse 16 titus chapter 1 verse 16 they profess that they know him they try to cook up a kind of testimony if you ask them questions are you born again they profess they know god are you sanctified they profess they know god are you filled with the holy ghost they profess that they know god do you believe every doctrine of the bible and are you ready and willing and as led to contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints they say yes they profess to know god i about their prayer lives they can't talk about that i about quiet time they can't talk about that i about desire relish delight in the word of god they can't talk about that 
how about a change of life at a moment of time they cannot talk about that but they profess that they know god what does their wife think about them well that's another story what does the husband observe about her that's another story what do they tell about him about her in a place of work that's another story but they profess that they know god but in works they deny him the way they work you can tell christ is not there the grace of christ is not there the love of christ is not there the gentleness of christ is not there the meekness of christ is not there and the power of Christ's resurrection is not there. In works, they deny him. There's no grace in the way they walk. Being abominable, their language, terrible. Their disposition, horrible. It says, being abominable and disobedient and to every good work, reprobate. They're strangers, to the working of the Spirit of God. Actually, it's only when you start at the beginning and you come by grace into the kingdom of God. That's only when the work can begin. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2. Reading from verse 8, it tells us in verse 8, For by grace are you saved, not activity, not work, not any of the things people are running after, and the things they put above, ahead of grace. For by grace are you saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. We don't earn marks or merit by the works of the natural man. We don't earn any marks, any merit by the activities of the natural unsaved man. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. He works on us first. He works in us first. He works in our heart. He works in our soul. He works in our mind. And when that work of regeneration, the work of salvation, when that has first been done, now he reconditions us. He remodels us for good works that stem out of the grace of God. Look at verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. It's only the works that grace and faith are produced in our lives, generated in our lives, he has bypassed the natural and the human skill. And the grace of God now works in us. That's when good works begin. Have you thought about the work you do? You don't have to pray. You don't have to lean upon the Lord. You don't have to ask the Lord. You don't have to have any special love. You don't have to have any inspiration of the Spirit. The skill is just there. And it is taught in the brain, in the mind. And everything is natural. It has no grace. It has no love. It has no resurrection power underneath it. That one is not good enough in the sight of God. 
were created unto good works after that recreation which God has ordained that will walk in them. We're coming to Titus chapter 3. In Titus chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 1. Titus chapter 3, reading from verse 1. Put them in remembrance to be subject unto principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, and to be ready for every good work. I'm sure you've noticed in our country, you've noticed in the so-called civilized world that even from teenage age, before we even become teenagers now, it's like the educational system teaches us and prepares us to have respect for nobody and to obey nobody except our carnal nature. But Paul, the apostle by the Holy Ghost said, Titus, I put you in Crete that you will remind all the members that they'll be subject to principalities and powers. He's talking about principles in places of power. He's talking about authorities in places of power. He's talking about, to start with, our principles at school. He's talking about the people that have the authority to set exam for us and to get us through that exam and to declare whether we pass or we fail. They are the principles of the power of the authorities also was sometimes foolish. Were, we were, we're no more. If we're born again, we were disobedient. No more. If we're born again, we were deceived. No more. If we are born again, we were serving diverse lust and pleasures. We were living in malice. We were living in envy, hateful, and hating one another. But... Here is where the work begins. But here is where recognition from heaven begins. But after that, the kindness and the love of God, our Savior toward man, appeared not of the works, not by works of righteousness which we have done. We had none. But according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which is shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified, you see that, that's where it begins. We're saved, our hearts are turned around and changed. And the dirty things and the hardened area of life of the past, everything is now softened by the gentleness of Christ. And being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Look at how good works now come in. After salvation, after regeneration, after justification, after the freedom from sin, after the newness of life, after the new heart. Look at how it comes in, verse 8. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will, that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed, they which have Believed, they are believed unto salvation, believed unto righteousness, they are believed the love of God, they are believed in God, might be careful to maintain good works. Saved, born again, after that, they are now careful, they are diligent, they are conscientious to maintain good works. Look at verse 14. 
let ours also learn to maintain good works in their offices, in their communities. Let ours, those who belong to us, those who are part of us, those who have been regenerated, those who have been born again, let ours also learn, learn all that you have learned in the world, how to do it, how to act it, how to replace it, how to reorganize it, how to administer it, it's not enough. You come now in the kingdom and let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses that they may not be unfruitful. You will not be unfruitful. I said you will not be unfruitful. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. I read from verse 11. Titus chapter 2 verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all good works, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws we should live soberly. So bright was not part of the skill you learned. But now you are born again. Whatever you have, whatever you know, whatever training you might have gone through before you came into the kingdom, now the grace of God makes your life sober, righteous, godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope. And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Look at this. Who gave himself for us. That he might redeem us from how many iniquities? All iniquity. If iniquity is still there, secret iniquity. Hidden iniquity. Iniquity that you are trying to excuse. Have a good intention. Have a good purpose. Have a good plan. Have a good project. Only this and that went wrong. Iniquity, you're excusing it instead of confessing it. It says that he redeems us from all iniquity and to purify unto himself. A peculiar people, tell me the rest, zealous of good works. It is that regeneration. It is that reformation. It is that newness of life that prepares us for the good works. In Philippians chapter 2, reading from verse 12. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, means my beloved brethren, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Gird your salvation keep your salvation any work you are called to do that will take the power of the saving grace of Christ away from your life drop that thing drop that thing there's no point being successful being profitable and being skillful here on earth and then by the work you're doing, you lose your salvation. It says in verse 13, but for it is God that walketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things, you're born again. Do all things, you're in the kingdom. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that she may be blameless, 
and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. I'm, go I'm not going to be shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not drawn in vain, neither labored in vain. I pray God will help us to be vigilant over our spiritual lives in Jesus' name. Point number two now, the assigned work for all the brethren. The assigned work for all the brethren. Now you want to understand that in the life in which we live, the Lord expects that you will have a work to do to feed your family, to house your family, to educate your children, and to make it in life so that you are not a parasite. You are doing something. You are not going from house to house begging, asking for support. He has assigned work for everyone in the family of God. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 8, chapter 4, verse 28. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more. Before you came to Christ, you have been doing some kind of work that is sinful, that is criminal, that is injurious to the lives of other people. It may be stealing, it may be gambling, it may be lotto, it may be that you are a night worker, it may be that you are selling your body to make money and to make hands meet. It may be that you are selling alcohol or you are selling cigarettes or you are selling poison. You are selling things that destroy other people or just plain stealing. It says, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor walking with his hands the sin which is good you look for good work now that you are born again commendable work now that you are born again and if you say you are a child of god you may be born again for many years but you have nothing doing get something doing you need to take care of your family you need to be the breadwinner in your family and then it says you are doing that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Look at Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. I read from verse 1. Acts chapter 18 verse 1. After these things Paul departed unto, from Athens and came to Corinth. And found a certain Jew named Aquila, underline that name, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, with his wife Priscilla, underline that, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. Paul came to Corinth and came to Aquila and Priscilla. Why? For three. Because he was of the same trade, of the same craft, of the same work. He abode with them and wrought. The preacher? He abode with them and worked. He worked for a living. For by their occupation, they were tent makers. I want you to look at that same chapter, verse 24. That same chapter, verse 24. 
and a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. Being a fervent in spirit, he spoke and he taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. But when Aquila and Priscilla, tent makers by profession, when Aquila and Priscilla, tent makers by occupation, when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. You know, Paul, Aquila, Priscilla, they still walked with their hands. They didn't say, we know so much of the word of God. We can only preach about taking care of your family. The brethren will take care of my family. That's not the plan of God. The plan of God is that you, the man, the husband, will be the breadwinner. You will take care of your family. I said you will take care of your family. You will not distribute your children. You go there. You go there. You go there. Why? Daddy, I have no work. There's no way I can pay house rent to I scatter all of you all about. That's not the will of God. Then you send your wife to the village. Go and stay with your mom. She'll take care of you. That's not the will of God. And you, you are staying here. I am preaching. I am working for God. That work for God is not recognized by God in heaven. Bring your family together. Take care of your family. We're looking at Acts chapter 20. And I'm reading from verse 33. Acts chapter 20 verse 33. I have coveted no man silver or gold or apparel. Yea. This Paul the apostle talking. This Paul the apostle revealing his manner of life. His actions in life unto the believers and unto us. And he's telling us, he's painting for us the picture of a model. It says, Yea, in verse 34, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities, not idle, not indolent. These signs are ministered unto my necessities and to them that are with me. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring, so working, you know, ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. I pray will follow in Jesus' name. First Thessalonians chapter 2. In First Thessalonians chapter 2, I read from verse 9. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9. For ye remember brethren, our labor and travail for laboring night and day because we will not be chargeable unto any of you. We preached unto you the gospel of God. That you're walking in an office doesn't stop you preaching. That you're walking on a farm doesn't stop you preaching. That you're walking in a poultry doesn't stop you preaching. You must have a work you're doing. That's the assignment God has given to everyone so that you will not be leaning on other people unnecessarily. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. 
and that she told thee to be quiet and to do your own business and to do your own business and to work with your hands as we commanded you. Paul the apostle preached on this and so we have to preach on it. It's the will of God that every able brother, able bodied brother, every able bodied sister, every adult should do something, you know, laboring and working you know, to provide for yourself. And it says in verse 12 that she may walk honestly toward them that are without, that she may have lack of nothing. You will not lack. But you will work. I said you will work. You will not lack in Jesus' name. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 6. Now we command you. We're not suggesting. We're not saying uh, if you like this, lazy people don't like work. But we have to obey the commandments of God. It says now we command you. Brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that she withdraw yourself from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the teaching, after the doctrine, after the tradition which he received of us. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us for we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but were wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you the follow us. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. If any will not work, neither should he eat. If any will not work, neither should he eat? There are people that think that whatever is available in the church is for them. The money is for them. The houses are for them. And you'll find some people after the retreat where they're staying in the hostels. Everybody is packing out and they are cleaning the place and the fellow stays there. No permission. And no, nothing was sought from anybody. And he goes to work. He's getting salary even. He's not going to spend the money. He remains there. After one week, after one month, then we're going around and we'll find somebody there and we'll say, what are you doing there? Oh, he says, this is where I'm living. This is my father's house. What's the name of your father? Mr. Who? Oh, no, he says, this is the house of my father in heaven. And so I stay there. My friend, what if everybody at the retreat will stay here and stay here and stay there? And they're working and they're earning salary and they're not paying anything and nobody put them there. If you're going to be a Christian, not a backslider, not a, not a heady, hardened person, you will leave that place. It has not been given to you. It says, we have made ourselves example. It says in verse 10, even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. If there's any worker, full-time worker, administrator, whatever you're doing, and then people come to you, 
I want to stay here for, you know, the next three months. Will you permit me? You say, okay, you can do that. You have no right to do that. Because you are employed not to give all the accommodations here to people who just come in and roam in and they want accommodation. If you're doing that, you're giving out what does not belong to you. It is wrong. It's a sin. Look at verse 11. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly walking not at all but are busy bodies verse 12 now them that are such we command and exhort by our lord jesus christ that with quietness they work with quietness not murmuring not grumbling not complaining with quietness, they work and they eat their own bread. You'll be obedient in Jesus' name. We're looking at Psalm 104. Psalm 104. I'm reading from verse 23. Psalm 104. We're looking at verse 23. Man goes Forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening. You must have something you are doing. This is the appointment of God. This is the assignment of God that everyone, man, goes to his work and to his labor until the evening. And when you get there, you really work. Do you love work? I said, do you like work? Or is work a body? Is work a disturbance? Answer now. You will work with all your strength. Proverbs chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 9. Proverbs 18 verse 9. He also that is lawful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. Wasting time, wasting life, wasting opportunities, wasting his family, wasting his own prestige, wasting his own honor, and wasting every good thing that he has. He also that is lawful in his work his brother to him that is a great waster. Proverbs 14, verse 23. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 23. In verse 23, in all labor there is profit. If you don't have of his work, look for manual labor. And there are even unbelievers. They are graduates. They will not stay idle. They're doing something. They might be driving a taxi. Or they might be driving a tricycle. Or they might be working at a construction site. Unbelievers, they must feed their family. How is it that those who are Christians, those who are born again, cannot lay the example and show a pattern and work? We will work. Look at verse 23 there. Proverbs 20, Proverbs 14, 23. In all labor there is profit. For the talk of the leaves tendeth only to penury, only to poverty. Thank God from this day you will work and the Lord will go with you. And the Lord will prosper the work of your hand. But you'll be sincere at that work, faithful at that work. You'll be diligent at that work. You'll be number one and do the work no matter what work it is. You will excel in that work and you'll have everything the Lord has ordained for you in Jesus' name. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand find to do. Do it 
with thy might. For there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. We'll come to point number three. The acceptable work for his blessing. The acceptable work for his blessing. It's not just any kind of work. Must do work that God can bless. Do work that God will approve. Do work that God will accept. Deuteronomy chapter 33. I read from verse 11. Deuteronomy 33. We're reading from verse 11. Bless Lord his substance and accept the work of his hand. I'm praying for you. Bless Lord their substance and accept the work of their hands. Job chapter 1 verse 10. Job chapter 1. We're reading from verse 10. Here is Satan complaining. Hast thou not made an edge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands. Satan will complain about you. Satan will be unhappy about you. Yeah. Satan will become anxious and worried about you. Yeah. The more he tries to stop you, the more you are making progress. Yeah. The more he says you will not prosper, the more the Lord will bless the work of your hand. Yeah. Because you are going forth in the power of resurrection. Until Satan will say, God, what are you doing? It's like you are concentrating all the protection, all the work, all the opportunity in the life of this single man. Thou hast blessed the work of his hand, and his substance is increased in the land. You will increase in the land. In this land, you will increase. Look up here. There are people that tell us the economy is bad. The situation is bad. There is nothing I can do. Look up here. Where did these people on the road, where did they get all these cars? that bring hold up? Have you thought about that? Why is it to wake up in the morning, 5.30, 6 o'clock, and you are going to work? There is already hold up. The people who are working, you know, there are so many. If they are not working in the office, they are working in a shop. They are working you know, in a company. They are working in a factory. They are working somewhere. If they are not employed by somebody, they are self-employed. And there is hold up on the road. Why is it? It is only you that cannot find something doing. God has given intelligence to those people. And they are working. From today, your situation will change. You know, anybody can give a skills. Let me read to you from Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 1. He placed Darius to set over the king and hundred. He pleased Darius. I'm reading from verse 1. He pleased Darius to set over the kingdom and hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents of whom Daniel was, tell me, tell me, tell me, why can't you be forced? You'll be head, you'll not be tail. You'll be forced, you'll not be the last. 
Daniel could have said, you know what, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, were in captivity. And because we came to captivity, we're following us here. Let's be careful now so that we don't progress too much and make the people of the land angry. But Daniel put in everything is God. The work you have to do, you put in everything you have got. You'll be number one. Over these three presidents of whom Daniel was forced, that the princes might have accounts of the, unto them, give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. You must understand what you employed, wherever you employed, that the company will have no damage, that the institution there will have no damage, and you're working towards that. You're not just working because you're having salary or you're having remuneration. You're working so that that place will not have any damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the princes, above the presidents, because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Thank God your promotion is coming. Yeah. Ecclesiastes, I'm reading from chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, I read from verse 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man this is the whole duty of man for god shall bring every work into judgment and every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil you'll be a pattern of good works Titus chapter 2, reading from verse 7. Titus chapter 2, verse 7. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. Maybe you are a preacher. Maybe you are a pastor. But you are also a worker in a factory, a teacher in a school, a proprietor a proprietress in a school be a model a pattern of good works in all things in doctrine showing on corruptness and in might gravity sincerity the time of blessing has arrived for you are you going to seize your opportunity? Deuteronomy chapter 28. I'm reading from verse 1. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. And it shall come to pass. It is coming to pass in your life. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city you will find work in the city. Blessed shall thou be in the field. You will find work to do in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. You'll have enough to educate the offspring of your family in Jesus' name. And the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of the sheep. 
Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in. When you come in, you come in here with a smile. Your wife will know that now there is money to pay house rent. There is money to go to market and buy food. The children will know there is money to buy clothes. Blessed shall be thou when thou comest in. Blessed shall be thou when thou goest out. When you go out, you will meet prosperity. And the Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy houses. And in all that thou settest thy hand unto, it shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Don't say, I'm not a native of this state. Wherever you are, it's where the Lord has sent you. In this place, you will prosper. Verse 9, verse 9, the Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself. As he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways, and all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, they shall be afraid of you. They will not be bold enough to terminate your appointment. They shall be afraid of thee. The Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body. Barrenness is cancelled in Jesus' name. In the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. The heaven to give rain unto thy land in a season. And to bless. And to bless. Say it, read it. And to bless. And to bless. All the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, above only, above only. Where is he? Where is she? I can't see you. Above, tall, higher, greater more prosperous you'll be above only you will not be beneath if thou if thou hearken unto the commandments of the lord thy god which i command thee this day and to do them a new day has come power has come power to work power to progress power to be on top Power to climb the mountain. Power to challenge every difficulty. Power to be number one. Power to be above only. Power to succeed. Open your mouth and make it a reality. Open your mouth and make it a reality. The day of his power. The man of God said, the power has come. 
the power has come. Decree. Receive. Pray that prayer that make the power real today. Power to climb all the mountains. Power to succeed. See how you are praying. Some are praying, some are praying, some are praying. Pray that prayer. That what the Lord has sent to us today, to you today, through our Father in the Lord, the reality is coming now, before leaving this place. Power to face all challenges. He shouted, he did you hear? Turn into prayer. Above only. Power to remain above only. But as we are praying, we should know where he started from. From the foundation. Foundation. All the bad foundations will be relayed today, according as has decreed. Pray in your life. All the activities of your life. All that you are doing here and there. Either for your job, or for the church, or in, uh, or for the, or in the kingdom, so to say. But no foundation. No foundation. Pray that you are laying the foundation today. The word of God released. You will repent if you need to repent. Because you cannot escape all the pronouncements from heaven upon your life today. Let there be repentance everywhere. Look at your life, look at your life, look at your life. So that the word of God, that the man of God has released, the blessing released, will not pass you by. All our guests, all our newcomers, I congratulate you. I say I congratulate you. Foundation. Foundation. The real foundation for us to walk with his resurrection power. Before you can walk with his resurrection power, you need to lay that foundation. No iniquity. Foundation of holiness. Foundation of righteousness. Foundation of obedience. Foundation of being the perfect will of God. You've heard from the throne of grace. How will you claim the blessing without coming to foundation laid by the man of God today? The will of God. The will of God. Is that there is appointed work for every believer. Anything you do with iniquity will be void of his power. Our Father in the Lord said it clearly. Believe it. Act on it now. Do it now. Don't postpone. Any form of iniquity. Any form of sin. Any form of hypocrisy. Any form of any kind of pretense. Any form of exaltation of self. Any form of sin in any way, in any manner, in any picture. Say, I destroy. Jesus died for that. So that you can have access to all the pronouncements of the man of God today. I will never let thee go except to bless me. It must happen in my life. But lay the foundation so that you know here in the last day, depart from me, ye that works iniquity. Any form of affiliation with the devil, Satan. Any form of the devil works in your life today. The Son of God was manifested. Destroy. I say destroy. We are leaving this place righteous. We are leaving this place with the picture.